What is going on, guys? And welcome back to You Don't Know Jack podcast, the official podcast of Roush Performance. And uh, we're sitting here on episode three with the Roush Performance Engine Group, guys. And man, I am super pumped for this one because, I mean, we're talking horsepower, we're talking engines. This is the heart of Roush Performance. So it's going to be pretty cool uh, to sit down with Jim Kemp and Ron Sharp uh, from the Roush Performance Engine Group team. Uh, let's get to know these guys a little bit. Jim, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been at Roush? Well, I tell you what, it's, uh, I started in 95, so I was a graduate of uh, University of Northwestern Ohio, which is uh, basically a, a trade school, and uh, was, I was always a gearhead, so yeah. grew up wrenching where I could on whatever I could, so, uh, you know, dad would pull out of the driveway, I'd take apart the lawnmower, <laughs> see if I couldn't <laughs> upgrade it or do something different or make it run a little bit better, but, you know, the the feat there was to get it back together before he got home. So. That's right. But, uh, but yeah, um, started here in 95 and, yeah. um, I was, uh, I was 19 going on 20. So I'm getting ready to hit 30 years here pretty soon. Wow. Um, so 28, 29 years kind of deal and, and, uh, have, have been through a lot of different stuff and seen a lot of very, very cool things. I mean, literally the start and the end of car platforms. Yeah. So, you know, to see something, you know, come in as a concept and, and actually hit production and yeah. then roll out of production and actually, like, we're done with that. Yeah. Right. So, but, you know, I've always been kind of pushed towards the aftermarket and performance side. So, yeah. Um, that's where I always, you know, kind of grew my passion and loved racing. I did some drag racing myself and, and uh, always really saw myself a part of, of this engine group. Yeah. So I uh, um, was basically a supervisor of a, a garage services where, you know, we were a bunch of prototype mechanics and service mechanics. So I, I ran a group of those guys and, and then uh, the, the guy who sold the crate engines, right, ended up retiring. So they started this mass manhunt on, okay, who's the right guy to sit in the seat to yeah. do this? And uh, at one point in time, we actually had a hot rod shop that we did a bunch of cool projects in. And um, I was over there for a little while and, uh, basically, they come to me and said, "Hey, you, you, you need to, you need to be this guy." Yeah. So, I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." <laughs> you know. Um, on the other hand, you know, everybody on the the other side was like, "No, you, you're like a, you're an asset over here." So, right. <laughs> you know, we don't want you to go. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I ended up uh, falling into this uh, this opportunity, and you know, it's been it's been awesome. You know. Yeah. Uh, just that's being cool. a part. Thirty of years. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, obviously you're extremely valuable to the company and. But in 30 years, I mean, the cool part is, is saying that you actually look around and there's tons of people at 25, 30 years. I, uh, at last meeting, they were showing like these people retiring and all the 10 years were 20 plus years. I mean, that right. says something about a company, sure. which is which is pretty cool. But it is. And no. then you see a bunch of the one years, too. I mean, that's yeah. a, that's even a huge group, too. You right. Look at the one and the fives. Yeah, oh yeah. And you look back and you're like, man, I remember. that was me. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. the guy at one point in time. So. Yeah, I'm the five year guy right yeah. now. Let's go. Heck yeah. <laughs> Getting old. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to get a coffee cup. Yeah, <laughs> sick. But uh, let's, Ron, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I started at Roush in 2007. Uh, at the time, we were doing a lot of drag racing, so I kind of walked right into that, uh, mostly for the NMRA and NMCA. Uh, we won a couple championships doing that with Robbie Blankenship and his Mustang and Don Bowles and uh, really had a good time going down Florida to get out of here early, you know, spring. And, uh, yeah, we won, I think we won four out of five years that we drag wow. race. So yeah, you guys, a, you guys was, wrecked the class, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we, uh, we changed. A, a lot of rules got changed because of us. So. Ron Sharp rules. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. It was, but uh, it was a lot of fun. You're you're carrying the the torch of Jack, uh, senior. Think about. It. I feel like there's so many rules changes because Jack always pushed that envelope with NASCAR. NASCAR is like, oh, all right, well, Jack's pushing us here, and 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 you saw a lot of changes happen like that. So it's pretty cool to see that instilled in the employees of the company that are pushing the envelope. Yeah, and cool. I think that's always what that that culture here uh, feels like. Yeah, it was it was a really good time. So. We did that, and then uh, after that, we kind of did some vintage road race stuff, and then we really hit the off-road truck racing pretty hard. Which we're going to talk about, because <laughs> that's where I, I know the Ron, right. Ron from, right. is the, the off-road world. But, Jack, you had mentioned right before we kicked off the podcast that, that 
did you work in the engine group or around that? Uh, yeah, in college, I uh, worked on a project with uh, some of these guys' predecessor. Uh, just It was an awesome experience. You know, it's kind of funny uh, as well. You know, we're all gearheads here, all passionate about creating performance. But really, you know, the entire company started with engines. Uh, we were in an engine shop, you know, back when I was a little kid. I remember... Uh, now we have, we're sitting in building 50 right now. Uh, there was a time when there was no names to the building. It was just the shop. And now it's called building one. And uh, yeah, it's uh, just really wild to see how much we've grown. But really at the core of it, at the core of our DNA is a passion for engines. So yeah, yeah. now you got that. And there's so many, there's so many stories uh but I, I think that's what drives a lot of the passion around us. I mean, talking about like the five year guys here and about the 25 year guys, you guys have tons of stories. And oh and God. I think the biggest thing. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's what I think you always kind of hear around the office. Everyone kind of tells you stories. We were just telling one right before things kicked off here. And it's so cool because that's what like it carries about it. I don't know. I don't. Maybe it's the passion or it just carries the, the hit. It shows all the history of where we've where we've been, where we're going. But I want you guys to share what is a story that that sticks with you that whether it's Jack related or the engine group related here at Roush, but what is just one that you're that you always feel like you got to tell somebody about? Well, I'm going to I'm going to hog this blank for a minute and yeah. tell you about two stories. So, Perfect. So back in my earlier prototype days, I worked on uh, Ford Transit, right? It's a European it actually made it over here for a little while. I yeah. worked on that f- platform forever and um we got chose to go over to uh, England, Europe, and and do this this engine swap in this vehicle in front of like thirty countries of media, and so it was this huge ballroom that me and another guy from from Roush, and he was actually he was actually the best man in my wedding, right? So, you know, Very you develop cool. these relationships with yeah. these guys along the way, and you just become best friends and stuff. So we ended up going to uh, Europe together, right, to do this. So Roush sent us. We flew first class. It was awesome. It was Ford backed because they had a lot of equity stake into this, you know, this yeah, this transit model over yeah. in you know in Europe. So, uh, so this big ballroom, right, and all these media people are sitting there eating lunch. So we drive this transit in, right? We literally start this thing and drive it, and it's it's rear wheel drive, and they want us to swap from a rear wheel drive configuration to a front wheel drive, and they want to time us to do it. So we didn't understand, you know, we figured we were just going to do an engine swap in front of these guys. Well, they wanted us to start it when it was all said and done and then, like, drive it out. Like, yeah, like, show them, like, <laughs> hey, the rear wheels are turning, now the front wheels are turning. So um, so they actually set this thing up and did it to Mission Impossible music. Oh, my god! <laughs> and there was a big, huge stopwatch, like, clock, a digital <laughs> clock on yeah. the wall. And we didn't know this was going to happen. But, and then, like, the butterfly started to hit, and we're like, oh, my God. <laughs> what? What, what are we, we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> you know, so they literally started the timer, you know, and there was this huge applause. You know, yeah. everybody went to eat and they figured, yeah, these guys are going to be, um, I don't know, doing five, five yeah. you know, a couple hours, you know. Yeah. And uh, our first time we did it, we did it in like, we did it in like 45 minutes. Oh my gosh. So the first, we were all jacked up on adrenaline and everything else. Yeah. And we were like, oh my God, we just did this thing in less than an hour. But we were practicing. Right. You know, doing this deal, and then we finally got good enough to where we set set the tools out. Yep, we knew exactly what needed to happen. We were How many go. guys? Two. It was just me and another guy. That was it. I drove the vehicle in. He kicked the hoist out, you know, from underneath it. Yeah. And we raised it up and started going to work. I had things that I did. He did things that he did. Yeah. And we just kind of met in the middle. And Jeez. at the end, we did it four times. Yeah. For different sessions of media, you know, over the course of four days, and. The last time we did it, we did it in 17 minutes and 42 seconds. Oh Holy cow. <laughs> I still have it on VHS. I've got a video. <laughs> That's how a lot. It was just like right before the year 2000, like yeah. Y2K. Like yeah. the, the world was going to end, yeah. right? And we're stuck over in Europe, and it's like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you know, it was creeping up on that you know, is great. the numbers to flip to zero and yeah. bad things to happen. And we're like, yeah, we yeah. got to go home before, you know, this happens. But we ended up doing that, kicking that off. We were like Europe's biggest celebrities. Yeah, like Ford took us out, you know, and they treated us really well. 
and we got you know just all these accolades for doing this deal and it, that, that was big that was fun i mean yeah. because we went to places and did things and just had a great time so um so that's one right and, yeah. and, then, and then the other one so we built this 56 buick for a guy for a private individual right this thing was beautiful and everybody thinks you know ford roush right well, you know we do some other things too oh yeah you know we got our hands in a lot of things right ron will probably expand about it a little bit but uh um, we did this 56 Buick, and this thing turned out beautiful. So we just got to finish in it, right? And uh, we're ready to give it back to the customer. So I'm all set. You know, it was my job to, you know, hey, let Jack know it's done so he can come shake this thing down. So um, we were uh, we were at the shop, and Jack shows up one day, and he's like, hey, I hear this Buick's done. I said, yeah, we're, we're ready to go. And he's like, it's full fuel? I said, yep. He's like, let's go. I'm like, I'm, I'm going. <laughs> he's like oh yeah yeah you, you somebody's got to write something down you know and i'm like oh okay okay so i hop in a vehicle we're on the freeway yep you know i'll try to keep it <laughs> as light as possible <laughs> we're at a, 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 a closed test track <laughs> uh, yeah exactly right. yeah we're <laughs> we are not on the road at all <laughs> but we are we're going fast yeah and i'm grabbing on this stuff like like oh my god and jack's over there just grabbing gears just going, and I'm, this is a beautiful car. I mean, this is a street car. Yeah. We're, we're qualifying at this point. I'm like, <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Yeah. You know, and my I, I keep on, like, uh, as we approach things. <laughs> yeah. Yep. My foot goes to the floor, like, you know, you're on the passenger side, and you're looking for a brake pedal. Yeah. You know? Yep. And he looks down, and he laughs, and he's like, uh, you nervous? <laughs> No, no, not at all. You know, and I'm like lying through my teeth because oh, I'm yeah. like, I am just terrified, but I know I'm in good hands, you know. Right. But but uh, I, I look back at that, and, you know, we pull back into the shop, and it was all said and done. I looked down, and I said, Jack, that was amazing, man. I said, that, I just went for a test drive with Jack Roush. Yep. And we just did some really cool things. And I said, I, I enjoyed that. And I, you know, thanked him. I said, hey, you know, I've been here for X amount of years, and, you know, I appreciate you, you know, having a place like this for me to come and learn and be a part of things like this. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, that was kind of a, a very, very cool memory for me that stuck with me for a real, that real long cool. time. That's like, that's very the cool. ultimate seal of approval. Like, all right, Jack's coming to shake it down. Right. Imagine hearing that. That's, I feel like it's a lot right. of pressure on you guys. I mean, because there's oh, so dude. many components and everything. And then it's like, you know, Jack knows that engine more than anyone. And he gets to get in that car and, and shake it down. And yeah. I've heard a of a couple of shakedown stories. So, uh, oh, yeah. and they're all very similar to, yeah. to, to finding that, trying to find that passenger brake. Oh yeah, they're, they're, yeah. <laughs> you're looking for it. I'm telling you, you're grabbing handles and you're just you're looking around and. <laughs> Jack, so I now kind of detouring. Do, Jack, Jack, does your dad drive like this all the time? Was like when you guys ran to grab groceries as a kid? I mean, were you getting there in record times? Is it his styling or is it more just on the? Uh, not all the time, but yeah, definitely sometimes. I remember, you know, uh. Being a kid, and I was used to his driving. We'd take his uh, uh, our Cobra out, and uh, uh, I think that thing had about 500 horse, and I mean it's Jeez. light as a feather. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know what are the statute of limitations, but anyway, seven, I remember seven being years. A, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, we're good. So uh, <laughs> we were on Heinz Drive, and he we're just cruising along, and all of a sudden this. Uh, motorcycle comes next to us at a light and looks over. This guy had like red, white, and blue gear that or leather that matched his bike, and he was just going to tear us up. He was certain of it. We blew by him, or blew past him so fast. I mean, I'm sure it just broke his heart. But <laughs> especially on a bike, yeah. But we did that quite a bit, and I was used to it. So we'd take my friends out, and I. I would literally sit in the middle between the seats with my arms around the bar and my friends would be freaking out. <laughs> I'd be, just be like, what's wrong what, with what's you? What's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were conditioned, yeah. conditioned yeah. as a kid being in a car seat, probably back then, no car seat. Or am I sorry? That's <laughs> my, they just had no. the bar. Yeah. <laughs> just, you had a package tray. That's yeah. where we rode when yeah. we grew up. Yeah. <laughs> Sit on the bushel of beans in the back, Jack. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you, you grew up Roush, man. Yeah. You knew what speed was all about. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's great. All right, Ron, what is uh, so what's a story that, that sticks out for you? Um, I would have to go back to the first time that I went to Mexico to chase 
Gay Smith's buggy. And it was just insane, you know. You you got to you got to get out in front of the buggy and uh, you're going down these roads in the middle of nowhere at 120 miles an hour. And it was just insane. It, 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 again, when you're in the passenger seat and you're reading the map and yeah, it's just, it was absolutely insane. You, you were navigating. Yeah. It was insane. <laughs> in the desert. In the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Dirt roads, towns. I mean, you're, we ran red lights. Oh. It was, it was well, Mexico. It was There's, Mexico. Right. So you, yeah, you can go as fast as you can. They don't care. Yeah. So it was speed limits just was, merely a suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty wild to do that for four days straight. And then I think when we first got into the power sports, um, we had a sixty four cubic inch two cylinder that we were boosting the crap out of and uh we were hoping to make seven hundred horsepower with it and this thing's shaking and we're putting sixty pounds of boost through it. Oh. And and to to see that little thing make seven oh five that day was Pretty wild, right? <laughs> two two cylinders, two cylinder, sixty four cubic inch. That is screaming. Wow. seven hundred horse, seven hundred horsepower, sixty psi. Yeah, yeah. If you're not a fan yeah. of boost, yeah, I didn't think that's who, possible. Who are you yeah. then? It was right? it was insane. <laughs> that's I was so nervous that we were gonna rip the dyno in half and the head was gonna blow off and it was pretty cool though. That is cool. Yeah. See, I love I love hearing hearing these stories. We, we need to what we need to do is just have a round table like once a month. That everyone just gets on a meeting and tells the, tells the best stories, yeah. but you know one and then also so going from the stories, being being here thirty years, Ron, you said seventeen seventeen years. Um, why why and and I like to ask this and and we we were going through some some brainstorming notes on this podcast and and uh, I think it started out within the marketing team, but I like to ask like why are you still here today? It's it, I mean for me it's the right place to be right yeah. I mean. It's got, you know, aftermarket. There's so many things going on, you know, and yeah. and just the things that we're a part of and, you know, the, the the cool stories attached with it and the history and the heritage and, you know what I mean, all all that stuff kind of rolled up. You know, it's not it's not just an average shop, no. you know, right. with a name out front. That's right. You know, there's history attached to that, right? Yeah. And then you'd, everybody grew up knowing what, what Roush was. You know, there was a kid that ran around the neighborhood, and I remember he had a had a Jack Roush sticker on a, on a 84, 85 Mustang. And that was like, oh, my God, that's a yeah. Roush Mustang. Right, you know? right. And that, but, you know, go figure. You know, fast forward, here I am working at the place, you know. Yeah. I ended up working at a tran shop, you know, for a hot second right out, of, right out of school. Yeah. And I remember one of the guys that worked there with me actually got a job here. And, and he come back and he put his notice in. And I'm, where are you going? And he said, Roush. And I'm like, Roush, like Jack Roush. He's yeah. Like, yeah. He's like, dude, they're hiring. You know, and this was back in 95 when there was, you know, just they were hiring like crazy. Booming. Yeah. Booming. A lot of things happening. Yep. They were looking for talent. And, and, yeah. I, You're RPP. I'm, off, huh? yeah, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm there. I'm, yeah. and I went and put an application in like literally the next day and got hired in. So, wow. You know, that was kind of like, oh my God, you got a job at Roush. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. I want, I, I want to be there, you know? So, so that, I mean, that started off very early for me. Right. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's, you know, there's a drive. You know, not not everybody comes here with that drive. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you know when you get here and, and you know, you start putting that drive to work. Yep. Dude, it's. Well, and the cool part is, is, I mean, talking 30 years later, that yeah. it still has that same effect when you tell someone that you work for Roush. Oh. You work for yeah, Roush? Yeah, absolutely. Like, and that's, that's. One of like the biggest like I love I love that I mean yeah. being able to and then tell the story and they ask about racing and ask about Jack it's just, it's so cool because it's like everyone in some way is connected to Roush or has has a personal story or seen sure. a Roush Mustang right. or has been a fan of the race team it's 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 pretty neat Ron what what is uh what's the reason you're still here today uh, like Jim said it's it's just the place to be I mean they've got all the right equipment to do the right job and it's just a, it's a great place to work yeah you know the name goes a long ways and. They really focus on doing things right. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's it's hard to find that, and uh, this is the place that does it right. So I yeah, I truly love coming to work. So that's, You hear that from Evan. You notice uh, there's uh, there's so many it's like, well, okay, you're not the fastest market, but guess what? We're going to do it right. And and I think that's probably been instilled by, by your dad, and, and now our leaders always nail that. It's like we're always going to do the right thing no matter what. 
which is which is pretty cool. And yeah. so you always know you're gonna be you're gonna be on the right side of the track there. But and also I, I feel like just kind of touching on that is you actually feel like you're making a difference. Actually, was it yeah, it was yesterday we were sitting talking to Hussein, our graphic designer and marketing, and we showed him a shock that he designed. And it's so cool. He's like it was a big deal for him because it went from a design on a computer. Now it's on a shock that's about to go out on production vehicles. Yeah, and he's cool. just like, he was holding it in like astonishment. It's like holding a baby. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, that's, absolutely. and it, it just to be able to kind of harness that and be able to have that and the ability to do so, there's not many places that, that give you that opportunity. So that's pretty cool. Well, let's, let's jump into uh, the next segment. And, and this is what is the Roush engine group? And, and it's funny because I sit here at, at working for Roush performance I feel like I knew what the engine group was until you start to hear all these stories of like, oh, they do that. Too. Oh, they do that, too. So I am sitting here asking, what is the Roush engine group? Like, what 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 do you guys what all do you guys do? Probably be easier to talk about what we don't. Exactly. Do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, we do everything. We, we do power sports. We do road race. We do drag race. We circle track. We Tons of we got aviation. We we yeah. got a lot of stuff. I mean, and the list just keeps going. But yeah. like high level, you, you guys are you just build engines for all these different platforms of vehicles, just makes about, models. Yeah. So yeah. the crate engine is is small. Is is basically a Ford base crate you know um, offering. Yep. So I stay within that that box of, of being a Ford based model, right? Mm-hmm. So most of my stuff is is you know Windsor nine five you know tall deck and then short deck. Um, 302 289 based uh, engines platforms and then we have, you know we offer some coyote um, supercharged stuff obviously with our you know supercharger on it you know that's a huge fan for uh, for guys that are putting together custom cars you know they you know I just talked to a guy this morning that's uh, that's putting together you know an, an old Merc you know he's he's looking for a supercharged engine for his you know his hot rod so um, a lot of people are, are kind of smashing together uh, old with new. You know what I mean? You know, old cars, modern powertrain, modern chassis, you know, all that stuff's available to do that stuff. You know, you're, you're today, when you build a hot rod, you can almost slide the body of a Mustang off, you know, and, and slide a, a, a different body right. on. You yeah. know what I mean? You, right. There's updated suspension. There's there's these, you know, new geometry, you know, geometry uh, frames for suspension, steering, um, you know, all sorts of stuff, ground clearance, you know, that they can tuck drive line up, you know, and so it's not hanging down. And so there's, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. But our, our stuff is 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 available to really anybody, you know, who's who's looking for an engine, right? That uh, you know that wants to power their hot rod or, or custom car, so. right? And and really, we have you know something to start from, carbureted fuel injection, and then we can we can you know kind of um, customize it a little bit for you if you want your own kind of look to it you know we can work with you on that so yeah. we kind of we're not the chocolate and vanilla kind of engine shop you know we offer you know we offer sprinkles man yeah you know? right right <laughs> so uh yeah. whatever you know within reason we, we yeah. can generally go you know in a direction of what you're looking for as far as aesthetics go so yeah ron what would you what would you say um is the oddest build that you've been involved with or, or in or and, and it can go to any of you guys here but Oddest build or what type of engine and something crazy? Uh, right now we got a 1964 uh, Ford Turbo Indy car going together. Wow! Oh, yeah. It's just pretty neat to go and see how they did it back then and uh, put some of the new technology with valve springs and stuff into that to, into the old package. And uh, we should be running that on the dyno probably in the next couple months. So that's a pretty neat piece to to see how they did it back yeah. then. And then. You Those know, things are rare. Yeah. Like that's right. that's an engine you don't see. Yeah, there's a handful of them left. And a lot of the stuff you have to make, right? You know, because you can't find it anywhere. It's right. blowing up in somebody's barn or somebody's shop, and and you end up making your own cams and followers and you know rods and pistons because you just can't find the original stuff. So it, wow. it, they're fun projects. Yeah, they usually take you know a good year to do. And that that was gonna be my next question. What's start to finish on something like that? A year? Yeah, a year. Pretty typical. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty neat though. Fun fact: Everybody thinks overhead cam yeah. is new. Yeah. 1964 IndyCar engine, man. Overhead cam. Yeah. Overhead cam. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty neat. You're right. Yeah, I think initially you're gonna think, oh, that's like modern technology. Yeah, dude, yeah. it's been around. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that is pretty cool. All right, going uh, going on to this is this is one 
and and Ron, you and I have talked about or have have uh, been to many of these races. Well, I'm not going to say many. You've been to many of these races. I have had the uh, awesome experience of attending one of the Champ Off Road Series, which was absolutely mind blowing. But uh, what I want to talk about next is like, what series are we in? What are we supporting? What kind of drivers? What kind of cars? I want to let people know. I mean, not only these custom builds that we're doing for resto mods or basically anything that that you want to put an engine in or get some crazy 40 pounds boost, they can do it. Right. But what are we currently in right now that people may recognize? Uh, we do the Champ Off Road, mm -hmm. and we've got about uh, 22 vehicles that we build engines for, everything from Pro Ford to Pro Buggy. Um, we've won the championship, uh, again, four out of five years, last three years in a row. Last year we were one, two, three in the points. So yeah. look but at yeah. you, look at you class wrecking. We, <laughs> That's we right. Do, we do a pretty good job. Like yeah. I said earlier, you know, we try to do things the right way. And, you know, a lot of times that shows up in winter circles. So we do that. And then we do best in the desert. Uh, we do the score series, which is Baja 1000, stuff like that. Uh, we do a lot of power sports stuff since that's boom is is crazy. Yeah. So, in fact, on the 20th of February, we're going out to Dome Valley, Arizona, and uh, we're taking that buggy that made 700 horsepower. And we're going to see if we can set the record. So that's pretty neat. We do a lot of vintage road race. Uh, we've got a couple sprint car guys that we have. And I mean, we can go on forever. We yeah. do everything. Right. So and that's and that's almost like when I was bringing up like i thought i knew what you guys did until you hear these stories of oh no they built me an engine oh no they did this and it's like we did what yeah it's it's pretty wild but jumping back to the the first one that you mentioned was the champ off-road series yep. i think this is the one i was absolutely blown away jack you attended crandon what was what was your thoughts of all that oh it's crazy uh i mean it's like well i i have not driven one of those vehicles except for in the simulator and it feels like you're superman out there just how little you're <laughs> on the ground right and you can yeah. actually adjust the pitch of the vehicle yep. with the throttle yeah it's pretty wild it's such an amazing show yeah. those yeah. guys are crazy it's and Crandon oh. is a special place it's a town of 1900 and on that weekend 77,000 people show up it's and it's all of 77,000 it's insane kid rock's been there i mean he's it's a pretty neat deal no that I've 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 been to uh, I'll say say a few I've been on the NASCAR side of racing I've been around friends and stuff SCCA level and everything and, and been to these events great events but this Champ Off Road event it's like a lifestyle <laughs> it it, uh, it and it's beyond anything else the first off the first time that I seen them come down uh, that turn, turn one. one yes and they all hit that jump I'm like they're they're gonna check up a little bit they're gonna check up and it's just <laughs> wide open straight launching and it's crazy to see that many trucks oh, all yeah. in the air. I, don't, I, I think I think if I said 120 feet, I think that's maybe short. They yeah. they they're jumping way out. Yeah, there. there's uh, actually not really, height wise, but distance. But yeah, yeah, they probably go 15 feet high. But yeah. they um some of the tracks actually have a distance gauge, and I think they go around 210. See, yeah, okay. Wow. See, and that's <laughs> yeah. That's I didn't insane. I didn't want to sound like a goober, but <laughs> yeah, 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 210. Like that just doesn't seem right. Right. When you see it happen, <laughs> right. you see a truck launch the air, you're like, there's no way. Right. There's no, and no. they just take a freaking beating. Yeah. But it was it was super cool. I mean, uh, we had we had Brooks out there, um, uh, winners and um, Keegan Kincaid. Keegan yep. Kincaid. I mean, it was so there were so absolute celebrities out there. And the coolest part, actually, bring tying the Roush side of it. You wore a Roush shirt that around that place. You were like a hero. Right. That's crazy no, to me. You have a, whatever you guys have done. <laughs> you have absolutely just just put a put a huge spotlight on us because you couldn't walk around without people being like, "You work for Roush," or or. Hey, you, where'd you get that T-shirt? It's like, oh, I work for him. They're like, you work for Roush? Yeah. Man, that's so cool. And then even drivers, the respect that other drivers have that aren't running comp Roush engines or everything. It, I can tell what you guys did, have done there. That you, took a long time. A lot of hard work well, went into that. So. Hats off to you guys because, <laughs> yeah, being there, you you it truly uh, spotlighted Roush as, as the potential of what, what you can do uh, and just the amount of respect that those teams have for your guys' team was, was amazing. It's like you guys are heroes out there. Well, it's good to hear that. So, but no, hats off to you guys on that. As we keep hype, hyping you up, <laughs> Ron. Uh, how many wins championships have you have? Do you think you have seen in in your time on on building these engines? Oh, uh, I would say there's probably thirty championships. Championships. That's yeah. big. 
Yeah. That's huge. It's that is a huge number. And a lot of wins. I mean, a lot of wins. Yeah. We had weekends, you know, that we go away that we... It was at one point last summer, I believe at Crandon, where we were one through eight. I'm wow. like, man, if we could only finish like this, this is something to talk about. That's we, of course we didn't. We did, yeah. but we did end up uh, like one through four, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that was pretty even consistent when when I'm sure when you attended, Jack. When I attended, that was like the talking about the winners, Kincaid and and Brooks. Those guys just I feel like they were battling out the whole time, and it's so hard to be like. Let's go. It's like, oh, don't take them out. Okay, guys, race <laughs> right. hard. Hey, is there any way we can just right? Let's let's get in there real tight. Right. Like, exactly. Pull, trying to pull for everyone. That must be tough. But that that's impressive. That's very. Imp- I don't think people realize how many wins and championships that that is. So, yeah, I mean, you got to think about how many wins it takes to accumulate a championship. I right. Mean, you just yeah. Kind of said that there. You know, that's. That's a lot of racing, dude. Yeah. Well, and at the beginning of the year, you start off, well, who's going to win the championship? And then by midseason, you kind of like, okay, well, we need to really focus on this, these couple guys, because yeah. one of these guys are going to do it. So, right, right. So, that's true. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. That is, that it's is a lot of work. Cool. But, yeah. oh, yeah. You, you lived out of a suitcase yeah. for a while, the, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I've lived out a lot of suitcases. <laughs> so, the young engineer that I take with me, the first time I brought him to the track, he actually threw up. So he was nervous. So ner- yes. Really? Yeah. I believe it. The way you, you guys hustle around yeah. there was kind of mind yeah. blowing. From team to team, it's like I I, I think I saw you probably <laughs> closer to the nighttime. I, right. I saw you, and yeah. at that time you were pretty beat. But yeah. it's like, oh, there's Ron run, running from one yeah. end to the other. Yeah, it's a seven thirty in the morning till twelve yeah. one o'clock in the morning. So yeah. it's a long day, but you know we try to support everybody the same and make it happen. So you guys are a small crew that go out there too. Three of us. Three of you guys were how many people? Twenty two, twenty two, twenty eight sometimes. That's spread then. That's yeah. You guys hustle. You guys hustle big time. But yep. Look what you did though, yeah. Yep, it's all worth it in the end. It's it's a it's a it's a lot of fun. That that puts the perspective of what they've developed in in that series with that many people. I mean that's that's super impressive. As the racing world changes and more spec engines come out, a lot of people come to Roush because the sanctioning bodies want an honest built engine that somebody can't come in and, hey, here's an extra little bit of money. Can you do mine special? Right. So we're starting to do more and more of the whole series. So we'll do, we do the whole class. So it's, it's pretty neat. That's going to put some... Yep. Tight racing out yeah. there. We just which, picked up want. Mazda Motorsports to do the whole entire, every single engine they sell will be from from us. Can we talk about like what what does that engine consist of, power That's, wise? It's or? a four cylinder. Okay. It's a hundred and eighty horse. Yeah. Kinda. Uh, it's it's, it's a nice really little a, piece. It's a grassroots yeah, kind of racing, right. which makes yeah. it affordable for people to jump yeah. in, right? yeah, and, and be able to be a part yeah. of. But. The, I, ma- the Mazda thing is, uh, I believe there's like 5,400 registered racers in the country. So it's a huge, yeah, I huge c- thing. I can hear them going up the hill at Laguna Seca. Sounds like a bunch of bees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. So my 15-year-old is karting, but I think pretty soon he's going to hop into cars. That may be something that we look into, yeah. that series. Yeah. When hey, we, we know we, a guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> When we met with Mazda Motorsports, they, they come out and hung out with us for a little while, and, and uh, they actually said, I mean, that's generally the progression. You yes. know, people come out of carts, yep. and they get right into this spec series. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I personally, I like that a lot better than throwing them in a shifter cart. Right. You know. Put them, put them inside something. Yeah. yeah exactly. add, add a little bit of weight to right. it. Yeah. Kind of develop the, the feel. Right. Yep. That's pretty cool. Well, going going back to, to memories, we're talking a lot about a lot of memories, but I think that's what what continues to build us and, and move us forward. But talking about things that, and Ron, just to your point of running around doing all these crazy things, what what's the craziest story? Of, was it an engine swap or, or something before a race, uh, or you made a last minute adjustment that that ended up into a, a winning scenario? Any anything like that off the top of your head? Yes, pa- Patrick Clark, the Budweiser Pro Two. Probably about six, seven years ago, we were getting ready to go out on the track. And I'm like, guys, I'm telling you, there's some kind of noise. And they're like, you're crazy. There's nothing wrong. Well, I'm like, (laughs) take the fiberglass off. I'm telling you, the motor's making noise. We pull it apart, and it was a pulley. 
And they're like, how did you hear that? And I'm like, I don't know, but I heard it. Yeah. Now let's fix it so we can get out there. Yeah. So that was, uh, it was so last minute. We barely made the grid. and Oh, man. It was just, it was cool. That's, so. That is pretty cool that, that you just, were you just in the pits or walking yeah, by? I was or? getting ready to go watch the race yeah. and they closed it up. I'm like, guys, Wait I'm telling minute. you, I hear something. And if you hadn't found that, there's no way. It would have never made it. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. It was like. So do you just drive down the road and listen to cars drive I by do. and be like, oh, you have this yeah. wrong. Right. <laughs> just self-diagnose. My wife <laughs> thinks I'm crazy. I'll just stop and be like, did you hear that squeak? Hang on. I, I pull over the side of the road and wiggle the back seat. And yeah, I'm that. You're that psycho. guy. Psycho. Hey, that's, that's actually hilarious. Because, yeah, you talk about, like, you know, the mechanic. Uh, what is it? The mechanic theory that he's always working on everyone else's car. But Our your stuff. engines are just tip-top shape yeah. all the time. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, jumping over, this is going to sound, but hey, it's, it's facts, so so we can say this. We're the winningest name in racing. Why are we so good at what we do? <laughs> what, do uh, what do you think it is? And, and, and I will say that you guys are so good at what you do, and, and it, it's very clear. I think Jack set it up properly at the beginning. We have all the right equipment, and we truly have a lot of people that work here that have the passion and the drive to just do it right. It goes back to doing it right. right. Yeah. 100%, 100%, man. It's people. It's, it's, it it's, is. That's the reason That's you could pretty much draw a straight line to the people. Yeah. You know, That's interesting that you say that because it even – Think about the conversations we had after Cran and we sat and ate, ate dinner at that place. It's yep. like never does it turn off because we are those people like we we actually live it. That's right. And so I think we just got as as excited talking about the future and what we're going to do. And look, at I mean, we're, we're getting to that point, which is which is wild, actually, to think right. we're getting to this point. Uh, but that's stuff we talked about two, three years ago. And, and here we are. So it's like we're always always driving to be better, Absolutely. which is and that. That tells a lot. I mean, you look around the room and it's like, oh, we all we all love cars. We all love the company and we're we're actually here to make it better. So it's easy to do when you truly love what you do. Yep. You, know, you think about it all the time. I my hobbies are racing. I mean it, it just keeps yeah. going. It, it, I think about this constantly. Yeah, when you go home and, and work on stuff, right. you know, that you do every day yeah. anyway. You know, each one of us has Yeah, going to that point. What well yeah, what do you guys got at home right now you're working on? You know, or good, good prize. <laughs> Name one. One. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I, right now, I got a I got a '58 Ford station wagon. Okay. And and it's got a it's got an FE in it, and <laughs> and it's actually kind of cool because the, the the story behind that is is it was purchased in Idaho, and the guy who bought it right literally flew in sight unseen, picked this thing up, and drove it from Idaho to my house. Yeah. Drove okay. it like just drove it right. Like I'm just send it. You know. We're, yeah. I'm I'm going to Michigan, <laughs> so. Um, so I've got that thing right now, and I'm I'm just you know as a as a hobby playing around with this stuff, you know, uh, just doing upgrades, yeah, and you know making it better, you know, right. just trying to make it to where the you know the the car can go anywhere, run on any type of fuel, and 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 yeah. be reliable, you know. So being a you know kind of one of those midlife kind of. Uh, guys that that are you know I'm I'm into EFI fuel injection but yeah. I I know my way around a carburetor too right so right. you know that that breed is dying off you know the, there's people you know couldn't even tell you what a carburetor looks like right you know we're still surrounded by a bunch of guys that just you know they know carburetion and we've got some great teachers so you know these guys we soaked in this knowledge and you know Ron we we're probably becoming the old guys at one uh, point in time or another we're, we got to settle down teach somebody a yep. thing or two about what we know but. They better strap in yeah, because we got right. a lot, <laughs> we got a lot, a lot that's of right. things to hand off. So, but that's awesome, Ron. What do you got going on? I don't have any cars, but I'm big into snowmobiles and side by sides and stuff like that. So I actually have a trail sled that makes 305 horse. Jeez, and, uh, on the snow. It's a, it that sounds in, terrifying. It's insane. <laughs> it's got uh, two inch long ice picks in it, and the acceleration is just incredible. So, unfortunately, this is the worst winter in history, I think. So, I didn't get to ride it much. But, yeah. the Yeah. So By I, worst winter, you mean the warmest. The warmest. Yeah. yeah well, when you're a snowmobiler, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you can't wait for the next snow. No. But this year, it's not going to happen. So, 
I kind of washed it up the other day and put it in the corner. So, And then I've got an old 62 wooden boat that I pulled the motor out of, of course, and got to give it a couple more HPs because I love pulling the neighbor kids around on the on the boards and the oh, that's this cool. and the that. Tunes. So, yeah, it's, it's, Heck a, yeah. it's fun. So That is yep. fun. All right, jumping jumping over. I'm actually going to throw a little, little improv in here. What a uh, question about, and this is just general knowledge for, for people at home. What is the single most or the best thing that you can do for the life of your engine? What is it? Is it letting it warm up? Is it is it oil changes earlier, later, running a certain oil? Like just high level that everyone's going to understand. Oil changes. Oil changes. And air cleaners are the yeah. most important. More frequently? Yeah. Just I mean, a lot of the stuff work. nowadays, they tell you you can go 10,000 miles and stuff. But if you stick to that 5,000 mile schedule, motors nowadays will last forever. Right. We've got a guy that works in an engine build that's got one that's just turned 380,000 miles. Wow. <laughs> it's yeah. Holy cow. Uh, race motors, street motors. Street, street yeah, motors. Street regular motor. regular yeah. car. Right. But, but yeah, yeah, totally agreed. What. Yeah. Hundred percent. The engine oil is the lifeblood. Yep. So for yeah, so for our production owners in stage three Mustangs, whether it's supercharged, naturally aspirated, F one fifties, change your oil. Change your change oil. Change your oil <laughs> and your air filter. Air you know. filter, fuel filter, or just more air filter. Obviously, guys, we're listen. We are not telling you. Yeah. <laughs> There's probably some legal jargon right. in here. Right. We're giving you high level right. here. Right. Right. But, Mostly, okay. Some cars don't even have fill filters anymore. It's crazy. You know that they've eliminated you know, some of that filtration. So um, you can't find on some of the newer cars, you know, a, right. a cartridge type fuel filter to, to change out anymore. You know, they just don't exist. So, but I, I would say, you know, pick a good quality oil, stick with it. Yep. You know, don't go chasing snake oil and everything else. You know, right. everybody's got this high level brand of, you know, something, you know, there's, there's a lot of good quality oil manufacturers out there. You yeah. know, we won't, yeah, we won't, we won't crazy, mention any. But, yeah, but, but there's a lot of good stuff out there. You right. know, it just yeah, pick something, stick with it, and change your oil often. There you go, guys. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. What about real quick? Letting your engine warm up. I think my dad just beat it into my head. He's like, let your car warm up no matter what. He he would go warm that thing up 30 minutes before even driving. And so now it's instilled to me. I Josh just heard me yell at my wife. I did not yell at her. I spoke high. I spoke very sternly, and I was like, please let it warm up. It does make a difference. It does. It, it, it's important to warm it up. Okay. So it when we're on the dyno with mm -hmm. engines, we let them warm up to a specific temperature before we do anything. Okay. So, Because um, if you actually measure oil flow from the time that it starts up, we'll just say 75 degrees yeah. to 175, the oil flow will double. Oh, my gosh. My d little story. So uh, when I was growing up, uh, I travel with my dad quite a bit to the road races this is in the 80s uh and you know we'd get rental cars and he obviously he was fielding fords in the racing and uh i remember some of the time he'd get upset because the rental car companies didn't have a ford car for him and he was technically required to rent oh, yeah. just for yeah you're not going to see him in a buick or anything you yeah know what i mean on race day yeah well i mean i think even ford you know mandated that sure the teams yeah. had to drive right. fords on the street and uh i remember a few times we'd hop in a car a little isuzu or you know cars like that no warm-up full <laughs> throttle <laughs> tear it up right out of the parking lot well Pro <laughs> probably mumbling this is junk yeah <laughs> That is great. <laughs> now that we brought that up, yeah, a bunch of guys at one of the races, we drove a rental car in first gear from Arizona to California. Whoa. <laughs> wow. That wasn't we. That was another team. <laughs> I, I, heard, I heard another. <laughs> Inter Enterprise uh, customer service is currently contacting oh us. What is God. this email right here? Yeah. Oh, gosh. That is hilarious. Yeah. Wow. It, it wouldn't stay in first. It actually went to third. So it actually went. Their safety. I think it was yeah. 6,400 RPM, though, all the way to California. <laughs> it shifted. It, I, oh my God. Dude. Those are no, the, don't ever let a bunch of racers rent a car. Oh, that's. No. that's yeah. yeah. And These stories are light compared to no. some of the others I've heard. Right. There's, yeah. there's more. We just oh, yeah. probably shouldn't talk yeah, about that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. We did, uh, and I, I won't say we. Um, <laughs> No, it really was actually another company, but they rented two Ford Fusions for a, a car commercial. 
um, and it was two white fusions. And we were bump drafting on the way back <laughs> from the commercial shoot because we just need two cars for a commercial. They used them and they actually clacked them together. Oh, yeah. Like coming into a driveway was the if the commercials out was out there. It's probably ten years ago. But as we were driving them back, we were going down in North Carolina and we were literally bump drafting each other <laughs> yeah. going down the interstate. That so. Days of Thunder thing, that was real. <laughs> that was, <laughs> that's exactly. right. That, that's that so, happens. Right. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, we're going to jump to what's next. Uh, last segment here on the uh, J- You Don't Know Jack podcast, which we're so glad you guys are listening to. And if you haven't already, make sure you follow. Don't forget to follow. Share this. Tell your friends about it. But let's talk about thoughts on EV. Talking about talking with a bunch of motorheads. And I'm going to bring up the word EV. They just both gagged. Mm. <laughs> you guys didn't see it, but they did. <laughs> what's what is what is um obviously we don't need to talk ugly, but what what's your thoughts on EV? Um I think there's a place for it in cities and stuff. I, it makes sense. Uh you know, I don't think it should be forced on us. But uh, I think there's a time and a place. And, uh, you know, big cities where there's pollution and you don't go any more than five miles in two hours. So And it doesn't get cold. It doesn't get cold. Or uh, too hot. Or, or too, too hot. hot. Or the yeah. power doesn't go out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, I, don't think I, there's, I don't think there's a place in the United States for that. No. <laughs> so I, I think that's, you know, that's going to happen someday, but. It happens when it happens. It's crazy, though. I mean, it, it, you can see it kind of creeping into the aftermarket, right? So I went to SEMA this year, and I'm walking around, and the presence of EV, you know, and hot rods and racing, you know, it's starting to starting to creep in, you know what I mean? And, and you know, Ron and I being, you know, dinosaur blood kind of fellas, you know, gasoline and oil, you know, we, we're kind of like, whoa, hold on, what, yeah. what's going on, you know? But like you said, I think there's a place for it. And I don't know, man. It's, it's going to take me a minute to just right. get used to it and, you know, buy into it, especially the hot rod scene, you know. But I I don't know. I, I think we're going to see more of it. You know what I mean? I guess I have to – I got to watch yeah. and see what it – because people are doing it, man. I mean, and they're making cool stuff. I'm not going to knock any of it. Oh, because, for sure. You know, I, I'm seeing, you know, Cobras, you know, aftermarket replica Cobras with, you know, EV power. I'm seeing, you know, like cool 66 Mustangs, you know. Yeah. I had no idea though. It was a, there was one at the at SEMA. You know, the the hood was closed. I walked up to it and I started talking to the owner. And I'm like, man, this this thing's got a great stance. It looks good, man. It's like Jack said. You know, it's blacked out. You know, blacked out cars look nice. You know, and uh, especially in hot rods, right? So, oh, yeah. it, tinted windows. You know, great wheels and tire package. You know, just everything. And I'm looking at SEMA. I'm like, man, what is? I got to see underneath the hood. And the guy looks at me. And he's like, mm. he sees my shirt. And he's like, you sure? <laughs> and I'm like, well, what do you got? You know, was it an LS? You yeah. know what? Yeah. What? You know, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna. You're not gonna. You know, you're not gonna offend me. You know, yeah. the guy popped the hood, and I'm like, oh, wow. And I'm like, it took me a minute, and I wasn't yeah. disappointed, but it no, was just right. caught by surprise. You know, it was like, okay, it's an EV. Yeah. You know, it's it's there's a package to retrofit these hot rods. Right. To be able to have you know um a power cell and you know a drive unit and you know these guys are actually doing some cool stuff with them. So you know, I'll give them props for thinking outside the box you know yeah. i mean that's kind of it's kind of what we do too you know what i mean so you know it'll take me a minute but yeah I think it we'll it's come like around. it's like the level of respect like yeah. no matter that no matter the vehicle you know that blood sweat and tears was was dumped into it i, I always look at no right. matter the make model it's like hey you may not be a low rider uh fan but guess what like those guys put it they have just as much passion just as much love for it so you respect it but right i do feel like ev came in really hot Oh man, and and I do feel like it's kind of dwindling off because I I think when you talk about the hot rod side of the world, a hot rod is a hot rod because of the way it sounds mm-hmm. and the way it feels and that gas smell when you sit in the freaking cab of a car like that's all the connective tissue to hot rod when you say that. I just don't see I don't see the relatability there. Yeah, like engines to me, you know, cars with engines feel like they have a soul. You know, they breathe oh, absolutely. Yeah. They yep. you know growl you right. Know. It's very visceral, uh, but EVs, you know, I've driven some, and it just feels like an appliance. That's it's such a good point. You're driving a dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> but I tell you what, though, the man, the acceleration is crazy. It is. Instant. Instant torque. Just. And that's where I respect it. 
I mean, and and not to throw out Tesla, but I think they've done an awesome job with their their model and business model, and their vehicles are cool and fast. But I I think you drive it one time, you get excited, and I just don't think that that excitement stays around. I don't know. I believe another point at SEMA this year, you know, I saw a, a Cobra sitting there in a in a booth, and I recognized one of the guys associated with it, and I go over there to him, and he's like, "Man, you you got to check this out. You got to you got to see this." And he said, go ahead, turn it on. And uh, it was in, you know, just in a display area. They, they, they had recorded one of my crate engines, as far as the sound goes, the <laughs> idle and a rev up. And he played it. And I'm sitting there, and he's like, you recognize that sound? And I'm like, dude, that's my, that's my 427, man. I'm yeah. like, you recorded my 427? And you just, you're like playing it. And it's like the sound's coming out of like right. an exhaust system. Yeah, yeah. And I'm that's like, crazy. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, yeah, like plays road noise into the car and everything. Yeah. That's crazy to me. That is absolutely it, wild. An electric vehicle with a with an engine noise. <laughs> with an engine yeah, noise. With a, with a rev up and an idle, and you know, it was pretty neat. I'm gonna just record my own. Like, beep 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 beep. That's an import. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so this this was a question um, that actually we we brought up with with engineering on on the last episode and i think i want to ask you guys this so where we've where we've came from let's uh, let's talk about rash performance uh specific as far as our vehicle offerings go we've gone from 450 horsepower well even even before that through i think it's 385 what was s1 s197 or s i'm sorry sn95 power that was a that was still a that was still a five liter Right, that was a five liter. I don't remember. My two hundred fifty horse, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. So two hundred fifty, and then now we look at modern day. I mean, with our JRE was seven seventy five. We're seeing uh, our last stage three seven hundred fifty horsepower. We've seen that gain right over fifteen years, a little bit longer. Are we gonna continue to see this trend? God, I hope so. Like, are we gonna be one day? I mean, look, four, four like, digit horsepower. Yeah, right. Is it going to be I mean, fourteen hundred horsepower? Roush stage hey. three Mustang. Is that is the capability there? Are you guys seeing that in in these engines, or have, do you think we've hit a plateau? Where are we at with this? I think it slows down a little bit, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if someday there's fourteen hundred horsepower cruisers. You know, wow, like pump, pump gas type thing, like factory based type. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I think it's, I see it pulling back a bunch, and then I see them kind of, I don't know, figuring out that hey, I think we went the wrong direction. I think we need to jump back into this, this horsepower thing. You right. know what I mean? But it's it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of hard because I mean we've got all these regulations now and everything. That's kind of putting a dampener yeah. right on some stuff. So thanks, but you know I, I don't know what the what the scoop is with um, you know with with emissions and things like that. But I mean, that's, that's truly what we got to work around, you know, nowadays is you've got a bunch of regulations that, you know, everybody's got to abide by. I mean, you think about it. I mean, look what, you know, Ford was doing with, with their cars, you know, right at the very end before, you know, um, everybody kind of quit making big horsepower. Right. right. Everybody was like chasing each other. Like who's going to have the best, you know, the next best model. Right. To come out and compete. Yeah. Yeah, when you say a certain word around here, we gag. Starts with E, ends with A. No? No one gets that joke. Am I muted? Did you just mute me? <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's, I've, I've, I think I've always wondered that because it's like we've, we've gone on such a uprise. You see all this horsepower. It's like, are we just going to keep going? But, all right, guys, we're getting uh, ready to wrap up this episode, but uh, just just kind of a, a heads up for all of our listeners. I mean, you guys are, are all things engine, whether it's a resto mod, whether you're in a race series, um, no matter make and model. Um, and that's another thing. So t- talking about all the various different engines that, that you guys offer, um, this is a one-stop shop. So head over to RoushPerformance.com. You can click engines, and you can get over to the Roush Performance engine group team, and these guys will absolutely take care of you put you in the championship spot, put you on the podium, and uh, you're going to have a ear-to-ear grin uh, when you start up a Roush engine. That's just... Absolutely. It's, yep. It's what it is. It's so awesome. 
But want to thank you guys. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you.